Hey everyone, this is Three Questions with the Megan Lawson. Did you like that? I threw in. All right. So I feel really bad. This is a little backstory about this podcast because we recorded this last week and the audio sucked and everything was wrecked and the video. So I'm making Megan uh, do it. But if this one isn't good, the last one was amazing. <laughs> so there's that. I Paul, I am so sorry. I feel horrible. This was a great opportunity to practice. So I should be getting better every time. Right. There, yeah, like you made me spit. You made me spit last <laughs> year. No, it was uh no, I, I feel so bad. But but Megan is like legitimately one of the best people I've ever met. She is absolutely wonderful, incredible leader. So maybe I just made that up that it didn't work. So that I could talk to you again, maybe. Maybe that would be a better response. That would be super yeah. tricky of you. Yeah, that's not true. But if that does make you feel better for spending time, <laughs> I, I am so glad to hang out with you again. And so we're going to do the three questions with Megan. But, and uh, I actually, I'm wondering how many of the questions are going to repeat the answers are going to give me totally different answers today. So I, I don't remember, I, I remember, I remember once, well, I remember the first one specifically. So I am expecting that answer because it was amazing. But before we get into it, uh, Megan actually did write one of the chapters for because of a teacher, which was absolutely amazing. And you can get the copy. It's going to be in the description down below. You see, because of the teacher and let's be honest, uh, I didn't do this, but the cover of this book is amazing. Is it, it not? It, it is. It's a really nice cover. Like, it's like, even if you don't read the book, it's like a, a beautiful piece of artwork. Is it not like. There's something really wholesome about the cover. It's like weird. And I would have never, to be honest, with you, I never picked it. Like, I would love to say that I picked it. It was like my artistic, you know, belief in it. But no, it's just a really nice book. But uh, you have been writing for a while. Your blog is absolutely amazing. That will also be linked down below because I always suggest your blog. Uh, actually, I you don't know this. This is actually true. Uh, I'm running a health habits and mindset Facebook community that will also be linked down below do you know this do you know no. that what i'm gonna tell you yeah so your most recent post i used it it was about um it was about like jumping into stuff and actually right you know i'm talking you wrote that didn't you i did yeah about right. just taking so i actually step, used that step. i actually used that as one of the central pieces of uh of kind of promoting the community right no so that, yeah because it was so good so like i love megan's stuff i read it every chance i i can and it is absolutely amazing it's incredible so uh i absolutely had to get megan to write one of the chapters so can you just kind of just talk a little bit i we're going to talk about what you wrote about in the chapter but can you just talk about for any like aspiring writers out there um you know like what was it like to write for a book? Like what was right in a book kind of that process? Like how was that for you? Well, I felt more prepared to write a chapter for a book because I've been writing on my blog every week. And I think I've been exercising my writing muscles and just little small steps. And that was a nudge that you gave me that I'm really thankful for um, about just committing to writing every week. And I think that, I don't know if it was James Clear who used this quote, but there's a quote out there that says something along the lines of you're not always going to be motivated. So you need to learn to be disciplined. Mm -hmm. So just the exercise of like thinking about my thinking, I feel like it's making me a better professional. So when it came time to put a bit more words together um, in the length of a chapter, um, it, it was fun to be able to go back and look at all the different things I've been thinking about, um, which was one of the reasons why I think you had encouraged me to to, to write and why I know that you've been, um, you know, talking to people about digital por portfolios over the years. It really gives you a sense of what am I learning? What am I thinking about? Hey, so I got So I got to Okay. First of all, shout out to Megan for the amazing job she does writing. Right. So you get the button right away, but I'm going to actually, I, so just so you know, Megan's going to write a book at some point. I've been bugging her about this and we're just waiting for that moment to happen. And I'm for sure we're publishing it. So I'm making you agree to that before uh, we do this. But um, here's actually a little piece of advice. I don't know if I've given this to you before we ever talked about this because you write so much stuff and because, and you actually sparked it when you were talking about this, you already know stuff that you need to put in your book. It's like, what are the blog posts that most resonated with people? 
like go back and look at some of those statistics and you say like, Hey, this is going in the book. Cause I know this is like a, this is a sure thing post, right? Like that's actually what, what I did for innovators mindset, uh, innovates out of the box. I like went and looked at like, Hey, what resonated most and how do I actually fit this into the book? Because I think you're actually like kind of, you know, and a lot of people like, no one's going to say, well, I already read this on the blog. Right. I think people want to see that all in that space, but yeah, I, I've, I, I honestly, I, it, I, it does make me a little bit jealous of that. I've been writing 12 years and you're just like way better than I am. Your last post was amazing too. Like it was so good. And I was so glad to share the community and people were like talking about in the Facebook, like how much it resonated with them. So just, yeah, it's just, I love it. You're just a great writer. You're in, and in, in the intersection between of whether I'm thinking education, where I think about my personal life, I it just, whatever I need at that moment, you seem to kind of hit at that point. So I really love what you do. Oh, I mean, I, I coming from you, that just means so very much. Whatever. I just so respect, respect you so much. Let me Whatever. finish the compliment. Stop it. <laughs> no, I, I, I'm just, I'm just, I'm just, I'm just a little tiny blip on your trajectory. And so I'm just honored to be there. So let's, let's start off first question. Right. And I know this one, I'm ready for this one. Cause last time when we, hit it, I was not ready for it. Uh, so it is a very powerful answer. And, uh, can you talk about a teacher that inspired you and why? Yes. So I would like to talk about my first grade teacher, Mrs. Bogus. Shout out to Mrs. Bogus. Okay, we're doing it early. <laughs> I'm not doing it after. <laughs> uh, like so this, this is kind of like the, the <laughs> old school Will Ferrell. Kind of like, <laughs> right. yeah, I don't know. I just really okay. felt that. It's good. Um, I like it. So in order to fully... I think feel the impact that Mrs. Bogus had on me. I need to go back and share a little personal story. Uh, so when I was in kindergarten, actually, my dad was diagnosed with chronic myeloid leukemia and um, he battled cancer through uh, the winter into, into the winter of my first grade year. And I can still remember when my mom had to come home and share that just impossibly difficult news with me that he had passed away. And I can still picture myself sitting in the bedroom with her. There was a canopy bed and, you know, I had a nice quilt um, on my bed, brown shag carpet. I can just see my little self sitting next to her. But I didn't, I remember that, but I don't remember the words, mm -hmm. but she remembers it very vividly. And as she shared this difficult news, um, the way she describes it is that my very small little self like flies off the bed and runs to the window and overcome by um, grief. Um, you know, my face is hot, tears pouring down my face. Like I'm pulling the blinds off of the window. I mean, that's just how much feeling was in my little body. Mm -hmm. Like I was able to pull them off the window and I turned around to face her. And my first question to her out of any, anything, my first question was, are we going to have enough food to eat? Mm -hmm. And that's a really difficult part of the story for me to share, but I, I find it important to share because I think sometimes we get really caught up in talking about, oh, we're preparing these kids for the real world. Um, mm. that's very real. There's not, doesn't get much more real than that. And so for two weeks, I stayed home with her, uh, this reality that, you know, a parent could be taken from me forever was very vivid for me. So we clung to each other in this very difficult time, but eventually I had to go back to school. And I remember the day that I had to go back to school was a nerve wracking one. And I was very anxious about going back and I can picture her little powder blue Toyota Camry driving me around the circle drive to the front of the school. And I turn to, you know, walk out the door and I'm thinking, wow, it's going to take a Goliath level strength to get this door open and step out this door. Mm -hmm. And I look up and my first grade teacher, Mrs. Bogus, had a bunch of my friends from my class waiting for me at the front door, their little faces pressed up against the glass, cheering for me and waiting for me and beckoning me to come in as if they were mm -hmm. rolling out the red carpet for my reentry into school. And what I love about that story is that she took something that was impossibly difficult. Um, and she knew exactly what I needed to have the strength to come back. She turned it into a celebration. She created um, a very special moment for me. So, uh, and she really had my back multiple times that school year. And I think that, um, you know, there's lots of little stories of teachers who are doing that every day. They probably, like, she might not even remember that story. Um, but like, I'm almost 40 years old. I'll be 40 in June. Like, and I still like very vividly that Mrs. Bogus story is like a big hallmark story um, for me in my lifetime. There, and you, you know, there's no way she doesn't remember that. I know that too, right? Like, and I think that part of it too is that we go through that as educators 
um, you know, with our kids, we go through that process and how, uh, just, it's just amazing. I actually like, I'm wearing a hoodie and it has a pocket and I'm like holding my hands, uh, just, just, just so much feeling in there because like, like you said this beautifully too, this is not just the story of your teacher, but so many teachers that have done this for kids that don't get appreciated. Don't, you know, feel that. Uh, welcome. So I want to give the just amazing give that for all the teachers that made that impact. And so that that story, I just it's so powerful. It it is you know um, something that I think about too. And, and and the other thing you said too, and I think it's it's really powerful, um, is that notion of like people talk about like hey we got to make things relevant and you know how like you now kids are dealing with some pretty real things too and. I think sometimes not acknowledging that uh, is hurtful to them. And, you know, that, that that's something I, I'm not going to build on it anymore. I just, I think that story is just amazing. And I so appreciate you sharing that because I know it cannot be easy to actually share that. So thanks for being, I know you love, you love you some Brene Brown. So thanks for being vulnerable. <laughs> right. Yeah. Thank you. That's it. I was going to say vulnerable. I'm like, if I don't, I, I got a shout out <laughs> Brene Brown. <laughs> Renee Brown, just in case you're listening, right? We've got some vulnerability. I don't know if that is an appropriate time for air horn, but I know you love Renee Brown. So I do. I do. And I, I would probably fall out of my chair if I thought she ever listened to me on Maybe. the podcast. I think, hey, you know what? That story, that's a, that's a good Brene Brown story to hopefully uh, someone who knows Brene Brown gets that to her because I think that would, uh, that, that says a lot about education, who teachers are, and, you know, obviously it sticks with you today. So, Next question, administrator. So when you think about your role, and I know that you inspire a lot of great leaders, I know you've done a, a myriad uh, of different administrator roles. And um, I, yeah, I was actually lucky enough to to uh, see you in one of your districts. I was actually came there and it was awesome to see kind of you in action, uh, connecting with your staff. And you made me feel so welcome and your staff was so welcoming. It was just an uh, incredible day. So when you think about administrators that have had an impact on you, who's one that sticks out and why? Well, I'm going to get to my one, but I'm going to make you uncomfortable first. Okay. So just be ready for that. What? Don't do, don't Brene Brown me. <laughs> so uh, I've, I think a lot about people who I deeply respect uh, in our field and also just as human beings in the world. And um, I think the reason why, I so deeply respect you and I cherish you as a mentor and a friend um, is because you could just easily continue to write and continue to produce incredible um, books and presentations and speak. And like, that's a beautiful way to impact the world, but you continue to be very otherful um, in your approach to making an impact on the world. And you um, find people like me and you somehow see some little nugget of magic in us um, and you grow that magic and like that in turn makes your impact like expand much further and wider than it would have had, had you just focused on yourself you, you stop it with the five people like you you're you're pretty easy to find just so you know that's not it's pretty you know when you have a light that shines like you it's pretty it's pretty easy to find right and it's amazing i actually like and i so appreciate you saying that about me uh i I just love connecting with people and especially people that lift me up, you know, make me feel you are a person that uh, makes me feel better every time I talk to you. So yeah, this is, like I said, pretty easy to find Megan. So wow. that, that, that's, uh, that's all you, I'm just, like I said, I'm a blip. Uh, it's just, it's, it's nice to connect with you, but I do appreciate uh, your kind of, what, what's, what is this cry day? Like, what are you doing? <laughs> I'm not ready for this. Okay. So like, well, I'm trying to make it less awkward by just using that as a, tr a springboard into who I'll also right. talk about All right, okay. um, related to my um, right, day-to-day -day work. So uh, Natasha Adams, I'd like to give Natasha Adams, uh, my current superintendent, a shout out. <laughs> Again, I don't know. I just I like it. I like it. <laughs> it. Yeah. It's just very nerdy and very you, I'm. I'm uh, you better watch out. I'm gifting that. A gift that. I think I'd actually be really into yeah. the gift of that. Okay. So Natasha um, is somebody who I've gotten to work with in a couple of different capacities. Um, she was previously a curriculum director in a different district, the one that, um, where we had the um, incredible opportunity to hear you speak uh, on a PD day. 
but she was somebody who took a chance on an assistant principal um, in a different district um, who applied for a curriculum role. Um, and that person was me. And uh, it was a big job that she was, was hiring for, but she saw, saw something in me that I didn't even see in myself, which is really what I think the two of you have in common as far as mentors in my life. And I think it's really special. Um, in fact, let me just tell a quick story about her. So she is someone who's normalized feedback in my life. Like it's not a big, scary thing mm -hmm. to get feedback um, because uh, we're around each other a good amount. Um, I hear positive, very specific, meaningful feedback from her. And then she poses questions or she'll tell stories about her own learning. And I'll realize that I'm learning through, through those moments. But at the end of my first, so by the time we get to the, and the, some of the best evaluation conversations I've had, uh, they've come from her. And we got to the end of my first year with her and it was evaluation meeting. And she basically told me, you know, all that you've been able to do in support of the, the buildings is great, but what have you developed their capacity to do for themselves? Mm -hmm. And I was sort of taking leadership as, let me do as many things as possible yeah. and do all of them for you so that your job is easier instead of looking at how I was growing the capacity of other people to be even more than they thought they could be um, for their staff and their building. And, and things shifted for me. And I feel like I learned how to be a better leader and continue to learn how to be a better leader because of her and her leadership. That, that is a, uh, that, that is actually just an important element, not only I think for administrators, but for teachers too. Right. I think a lot of times, like one of the analogies I would share, like when I first started teaching, I, th I think I was a really great speaker in my class. I don't think I was a great teacher because it was like, oh, wow, I could listen to Mr. Cross all day, right? But then the next year, I remember some of my students were like, oh, Mr. Cross, we got this teacher and they like make us like do stuff and like learn things on our own. I'm like, oh my God, what did I do? Like, it was like just like, <laughs> No, it's just like a show, right? And it's like, oh, as soon as the show is gone, then it's like, wow, you know, what? how am I supposed to learn if this guy's not making it fun and all those other things too, right? And I think, you know, I think great leaders do that too. They they help you find a way so that you're, you're eventually better without them. There's actually, um, there is a show. Okay, so we didn't talk about this last week, but I thought this is like, I'm going to do a little Canadian uh, stuff with you, a little Canadian show. There is a show called in Canada is like from when I was a kid called the littlest hobo. And I know you love animals. I know you're more of a cat person than a dog person, but the littlest hobo actually was this German shepherd. <laughs> I don't know why I'm talking about this. And the German shepherd would like go to like this town and there'd be like something like bad going on. And then somehow the, this, the littlest hobo, the German shepherd would like help. And then, and then at the end of every episode, it was like, oh, we're like so much better because of like, <laughs> of that dog and blah, blah, blah. And they would like give it a new name because it was like a new place at every time. And then at the end, the little, the littlest hobo would be walking to the next place and be like, well, I guess that, <laughs> that's kind of like, <laughs> what, that's a, I don't know why I thought of that because that's like, you know, it's like, the, I learned that from the littlest hobo like that. He would go in, he would make the, the town and the community better. And then he would just like kind of, they'd be better off after, because they're connected and move on. So that's really Lilith, cute. Lilith Hobo. It's like, it's not just Degrassi. Do you know Degrassi? No. What? Okay. We got, we got to do like a Canadian TV podcast. <laughs> sure do like, here's like Canadian. So I will, I know this is like, we never talked about this last week, but Canadian Degrassi. Okay. So Degrassi is a Canadian TV. It's like got a huge following in the United States. Right. And I remember someone saying to me, I'm not even kidding there. So it's like a bad Canadian TV show, but it's like kind of like a really bad, so bad. It's good. You know what I mean? It's like so bad, but then there is this guy, so there's this like big mega rapper that came out of Degrassi. And I was like, is that Jimmy Brooks from Degrassi? And that Jimmy Brooks is actually Drake. Drake wow. came from the Yeah, there you How go. How about that for a story? Well, Alanis Morissette, she started on You Can't Do That on Television for all the Canadian tri Canadian television trivia people out there. Just so you know, a lot of, a lot of Canadian TV going on here. And she was just in Cincinnati last week. Isn't it ironic? Cool, right? So there you go. Totally has nothing to do with anything, but Lilith Hobo for all, Lilith Hobo for all the Canadian TV fans. <laughs> One of my favorite shows as a kid. Just say it. All right. So last question. This is a question you actually wrote on um, in the book. Is you were you were 
the not only did you write the last in the last part, you were the last chapter. You were like the bring it home chapter because it was like such a great story. So uh, the 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 chapter you wrote on is like, what advice would you give to yourself as a first year teacher, and what did you share in the book? So something that I talked a lot about is the importance of our the work that we do on ourselves, like our inner work. Um, mm-hmm. it, there's just so much of that goes into our teaching um, and into our schools, the how we show up as people and as human beings. And I'm uh, someone who's been thinking a lot about perfectionism and the impact that it's had on my work and how it's really, I think, stagnated my growth and my work um, at times. It actually gets in the way of my progress um, if I'm not doing that inner work of, of trying to um, battle through that and be less obsessed about um, some of those details. And so I think um, I wrote about this a little bit in that post you were talking about last week, that sometimes perfectionism keeps us from moving forward, um, taking that, you know, trying things because we, we try to do it all at once, or we think it all should look a certain way, or we compare ourselves to um, some person we see on Twitter, or we think we've got to do everything in that education book that that person wrote. Mm-hmm. Um, and we can't do it all. Um, and we can't do it all perfectly. Um, so I think releasing ourselves from that pressure and just saying, you know, what, let me just move. Let me try something. Um, and let me try something after that and let me learn and let me try again and, and let me be okay being deeply human in front of other people and making mistakes and learning about, you know, learning from my mistakes in front of other people, um, and moving forward. And so I think I'm really, my advice that I would have to my teacher self would be to stop Um, to work on not tying my self-worth so deeply to um, being perfect, looking perfect to other people Mm -hmm. Um, and instead worry less about looking shiny or what other people think of my work and and to care more about how my work feels to me. So you actually, I I told you this when we talked about it, but you inspired an idea. And if you read my newsletter, which I know you used to subscribe to, but you didn't get a couple of them. So I my shouted email. you out. I was like, how come you're not acknowledging my shout out to you? And then like, my email address changed. I fixed that though. Yeah. I'm back on board. Okay. So tomorrow you actually see, and I, I wrote about this idea uh, about perfection and how I hate when people say like, uh, uh, Oh, you're like, you're perfect. Don't ever change. I'm like, what? Well, like that's a terrible thing for an educator to say to somebody. Right. Like, and it's not like, and I actually, like I, I, I wrote about it and I actually say, so you are, when I say I was talking about this with a friend, you are that friend, right? So actually, I, I like because I, I literally wrote it yesterday, and uh, you'll you'll see it tomorrow uh, coming out. It's like September twenty fifth when uh, that comes out. We're recording this, and it's already been out by the time uh, anyone's listening to this. And I said, and the reason why I have an issue with this is because perfection, like if you are perfect, you're done. Like that, there's nowhere else to go, right? And so in a profession where growth is the standard like we continuously grow. Once you feel you are are perfect, why would you need to grow? Why would you need to do anything? And so I think like what I I really thought about as I reflected on that conversation is that like, I understand the intent of saying that to people is like, Hey, and it's, it's really more about like, Hey, you're cared for, you're loved. That's what we're trying to say. But you know, even, and I, I I use this analogy this week, my daughter, uh, Clea, she, she messed up. She messed up on doing something. Right. And, and I talked to her and I said, Hey, did you do this today? And she's like, yeah, I did. And you know, I feel really bad. And she, she has an issue sometimes of like admitting it. I said, do you know what? You told me that. And I like, so appreciate that because that's, that's hard to do. And like, I can handle you messing up, but I, I just cannot stand when you don't, you're not honest with me about it. Cause we're not going to get any better. And that's something for me is that she was willing to grow. She was willing to do that. That to me is more important than saying like, don't even worry about it. You're perfect the way you are. Cause that doesn't help her. That doesn't help any, you know what I mean? How old is Kalia now? She's five. She's, so her she's ability, off. she can do like, she did something at, at five years old that many adults struggle with. Let's be real. Like that's, that's pretty impressive. Maybe me sometimes. <laughs> <laughs> no, but you're, you're so right. I mean, perfectionism is very self focused um, versus being uh, very other focused in terms of when you're in the classroom, making an impact on other people. Yeah. And, I, and I always try like, I understand, like it's, it's, I always try to kind of get, like, Hey, what is the intent of people saying that? And what is the, what is the impact? The intent is that you're cared for, is that you're loved, is that you, you're appreciated 
but I think, I think also it's, it's can be a really stagnating thing. I think that you get to a point where you're like, well, why would I ever change? Why would I ever grow? And like, where, where do you actually see that as a benefit career personally, health wise, things like that. There's always times that we can, you know, we can get better. And it doesn't mean that you're not awesome now. It doesn't mean that, uh, you're not, like I said, that you're not loved and you're not cared for. But I think when I love my daughter so much that I want her to get better that, and, and not saying anything is actually to me is I, I think sometimes having conversations, I had, I would have some tough conversations, um, with teachers about, you know, stuff they're struggling with. I'm saying I, the reason I'm talking about this is because I do care. I want you to get better because if I don't say anything, this is not going to be helpful to you later. Right. And I, so that I, I really, um, that's one of the things sitting and talking to you, 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 and this is why, this is why, by the way, I always suggest people read your blog because, and I love reading blogs. I love having these conversations because it always gets me to think. And then hopefully someone takes my thinking that I got because of talking to you, they write something, they make a video. And I think that inspiration could go around the world. And I, I just know, uh, selfishly, I pushed you to blog because I loved having the conversations with you. And I know that the world is better when they, when I don't think it's fair that only I got to have those conversations and only I got to hear your thoughts. And I know the world is better for that. So I, but it was just easier for me to hear from you often if I could get you blogging once a week. Right. <laughs> well, I just, I so appreciate that because blogging is an exercise for me in, um, being okay, being deeply human in front of other people and not obsessing over all the little details and whether things are perfect. Because if you're going to produce something every week, um, you can't be all caught up in that. You have to care about whether there's enough good and what you might have to say that somebody else is going to get something out of it, not whether or not they're going to think that yeah. you're a great writer or not. Yeah, well, you're way too good too early. So I, I <laughs> put, uh, so like uh, anyone who's listening to this, check out Megan's blog. Uh, and when that book comes out, it is going to crush. I cannot wait. So Megan to uh, actually special, I'm not going to do air horn for you because not only are you doing this a second time, you're doing this on a, it's Friday, Friday. Get down on Friday. Can we so two, I think that's two Fridays in a row. So I so appreciate it. <laughs> <laughs> I knew you'd like that song. Anyways, so hey everyone thanks so much for listening thanks for megan for being here on three questions again two weeks in a row i am the one who gets a blessing because i got to hear it twice uh you only got to hear it once so everyone thanks for watching look at that did we do this one did we do like a little bite thanks everybody <laughs>